and more at gmail.com. That's Divine Cupcakes and More at gmail.com. Or find us on Instagram or Facebook at Divine Cupcakes and More. Did you know that one organ donor can save up to eight lives? Like a small child who is able to play again because someone donated a heart. Or a loving father because he has your liver. Your lungs could give Super Uncle Joe a second chance. And your kidney, it could help Grandma pump iron. You're not just donating your organs, you're giving life. Organ donation. Join the movement and commit today at blood.ca. Canadian Blood Services. It's in you to give. My name is Caitlin. I'm six years old. I like to go to the beach with my cousins. When I was a baby, I was very sick. And then I got a liver transplant from an organ donor. It saved my life. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Communicating the gospel through music and the spoken word right here on SPR Live FM. SPR Live FM. Thank you for tuning in to Rebuilding the Black Family with Pastor Carl Lewis and myself, Clement Humphrey. Rebuilding the Black Family is dedicated to discussing principles essential to building strong, productive, and successful families. Please join the conversation by liking, following, and sharing us from our Facebook page. And that's facebook.com forward slash Foundation for Life Church and facebook.com forward slash SPR Live FM. Now, let's join Pastor Carl and me. Clement Humphrey. the time again that time again huh for rebuilding the black yes. family all right uh, so, so i need to come a little closer to you this way right get in the frame if so you to have speak. to <laughs> if you have to how are you man how I'm was your week well. how was your week the, we the weekend so far today is tuesday so far is good and the weekend it's is still good. a week it's still a week yeah, yeah. yeah. okay <laughs> all right do you want to the week the week went by you know? air you know <laughs> strain airs it's all right all is well, but thank you so much. And yeah. yourself? Good, good. I um, did my uh, little exam on the weekend. And, oh, good. Um, you know, to me, it went well. We'll, well, find, we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> we'll, good we'll news. Out. Good news is on the way. Yeah, huh? We'll find out uh, what's happening. Um, we have, a, a, I think we have a, a, uh, um, been getting some compliments from, um, from folks of the program, and they said they hope that we keep uh, doing what we're doing because mm. it's very... Um, and these are some personal friends of mine. Wonderful. Kind of, you know, listening from radio side, not mm -hmm. necessarily those from the TV side. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we invite them to come on TV as well, support what's happening. I said there's some new stuff that is going on, so they need to be there and find out what's actually going on. Fantastic. So, and we uh, appreciate that. Yeah. And also we appreciate those of you who are liking us on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, your page, you know, as well as our page, a Foundation for Life and Carl Lewis. Um, we do appreciate that. And those of you who are liking us and requesting, you know, requesting to be friends. That's right. We are welcoming friends. And so we do appreciate it. And particularly those of you who've been telling your friends, your family, loved ones. So we're increasing every day. More people are knowing about uh, not just SBR Live, but also rebuilding the black family. Mm -hmm. So we really do appreciate it. And I'm here, you know, of course, to promote SBR also because I believe in you and what you're called to do Thank on this uh, station. And so we, we appreciate this partnership that we believe the Lord's granted us. Um, I do need to emphasize, I do need to <laughs> advertise a full plug for Healing for the Nations. That's, That's right. our television program. It's on a number of different networks. It's on um, Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network out of uh, California. It's also on All Nations TV in uh, Texas. But now we'll be airing on, uh, of course, it's on your program too, right. so the audio sections at least. But the television program is also going to be airing on Daystar Television Network beginning this Thursday, September the 20th at 2 p.m. And for those so, of you who've seen the, the pre-roll, you have seen that little thing flying across. That's right. Yeah. You'll see that. We'd like you to, um, you know, send that out to as many of your friends, family, loved ones, in-laws, outlaws, whoever, to let them Tell know like about this uh, program. We believe it's a real blessing. Lord uh, spoke to us about television ministry quite a long time ago and prepared us for it. And so uh, it's a, mainly a teaching program and uh, I believe an inspirational program and, and, and an informative program that will help people to fulfill their destiny by really, by the empowering gospel of mm -hmm. Jesus. So I believe it will be a tremendous mm -hmm. blessing. So Healing for the Nations, myself and my wife on that every Thursday at 2 p.m. on Daystar. So it's a great opportunity, uh, a great connection the Lord's given to us, and we just want to see how this will go. We believe so. And remember, this program gets to cover Canada. Yes. So at least 10 million households really projected to basically accessible by most Canadians. And right, so right. all over Canada, every province, the territories. And so uh, we do, um, uh, those of you who are believers, Christians, please pray for that. That will be a great success. That will get into the very heart, the very fabric of this uh, nation. And from then on, it will go spread out. So uh, thank you very, very much. I wanted to emphasize that. That's a big deal. Amen. All right. So what we have for what well, we have today, for I want today. you know, we've been talking a bit about. Well, let me review a bit. Last year, mm -hmm. you know, we dealt a lot about um, some of the challenges in the black community, mm -hmm. and uh, we address certain um, certain issues because we're not afraid to address certain challenges right. and call them what it is, and what the answer is, particularly from a scriptural uh, basis. Uh, but this year. Um, for example, we talked about the, the role of the man. Correct. You know, sometimes you get pushed back on some of that mm -hmm. because people sometimes just don't know. If people, again, just don't know. Uh, we emphasize the role of the man not being, not in a sense, being superior, but because of his pivotal role in the family. Mm -hmm. and, and we've proven that, just not just scripturally, but also every secular study, or <laughs> every, um, really, we could say, um, good sociological studies prove that where there's the absence of the man in the home, of the father particularly mm -hmm. in the home, it does lead to detrimental effects on children particularly. Right. And so we spoke to that. We spoke to the, the importance of marriage. We spoke to the, import, to the importance of having male and female, of mother and father in the lives of their children. So we spoke a lot of those issues. But while we are um, coming into this second year of rebuilding the black family on SPR Live, um, what we talked about initially a few weeks ago, we said we wanted to start, um, go from a position of addressing our mentality. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and that is this, um, that addressing, or really addressing the kind of um, freedom from a slave mentality. Mm. Um, by that, we're coming at it from this point of view, is that just because, or let me go back a little bit, people who have experienced colonization, people who have experienced enslavement, people who have, ex um, who have experienced servitude at the hands of another people, even when they've been free physically, right. even when they've gained their independence, um, oftentimes their 
behavior, their mentality, their thinking, their expectation doesn't change. So just physical freedom in and of itself doesn't guarantee success. It doesn't guarantee true freedom. So one of the things we feel inspired to address over this next season and beyond, we've got to get this mentality. It's got to be this, we could say, this radical um, freedom from mental slavery. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about some of the premises for that. So you don't just think I'm just coming off, you know, on an extreme thing. Uh, because, again, just because, let me say it again, just because someone is physically free. Remember we talked about the analogy um, where they put in, they tied an elephant. You know, a big elephant. Right, yes, yes, yes. They tied a big elephant to this stake this tree stump, and he was there for, I guess, several weeks. I can't remember how long, but several weeks he was there. And so after a while, they took the rope, you know, of course, that big, thick rope. They cut it, didn't have it on, on him anymore. But guess what happened to that uh, elephant? He feels he can't move from he that He stayed area. right yeah. around <laughs> that tree stump. So the thing is, physical um, freedom doesn't guarantee mental freedom. Mm -hmm. And so it's, for the most part, it's our mental freedom that will determine our success or failure. Mm -hmm. So we have to address this. We, we have to talk about this. We've got to look at uh, why this is so important because, um, like I said, if someone has been taught all their life, you're no good. Now, let me say it another way. Suppose, um, and we're not afraid to speak about the fact is this. Uh, many black people live under oppression of mind and negative thinking. Why? Because there's this sense of inferiority. Mm -hmm. If you believe you're inferior, oftentimes you live down to that expectation. Now let me get, so, so sometimes when I talk about, let's say, um, much of the Western world functions under the mentality of white superiority. So that's just, that's there. That's, you just have to know history mm -hmm. and look at things over the last several hundred years just to know that. That's not an argument. And, and so with that said, the thing is this. If you feel you're inferior, and so that's a thinking, that's a, that's a mindset. That's a, uh, that's, a, uh, that's, a, that's a concept of the mind. That's a construct of the mind. Mm -hmm. That's the way you think about <laughs> you, yourself, and anyone who looks like you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let me give you another one. Did you notice the way uh, many times, I'm just telling you this is training over years of right. years and it's passed on down. Oftentimes people who are, are of color, people who are black, they don't um, expect the best from their own people. Correct. So oftentimes, so you, got, you understand why we say these things. And now if anyone knows me, you know me. My associations have been with people from all backgrounds, all color. Mm -hmm. So you know it. I'm not prejudiced. I don't say one thing in front of you, nothing behind your back. <laughs> yeah, you can testify to that, right? But the thing is this. The, 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 the challenge sometimes I have is that people are just not honest. They're not honest to come face to face with what historical fact teaches us and just reality in general. And so when we address these things is this. So, so for example, a black person oftentimes will believe or not believe that his own color of person will do something or produce something as good as a person who's of a lighter shade. Well, what is all of that? See, that's that passed down. That's that passed down mentality that you're inferior, that you're lesser. Now, you, we have to address that if we're going to be elevated to a right mindset mm -hmm. that is not controlled by slavery or servitude or subordination or control or manipulation or under the power of fear so that you're not, be, you're not fulfilling your purpose and your destiny. Right. Now, let me also say this, because so, we're going to get into that. Recently, I met a gentleman who I had not spoken to for a long time, the better part of a year, mm -hmm. and it was interesting because he knows me somewhat. But his question was this, you know, why did you have to, why did you mention rebuilding the black family? Why did you mention black? 
And, and it's quite interesting how, and I, and I, I proceeded to answer that because I, I sensed his heart was sincere. Mm -hmm. He wasn't being <laughs> mean-spirited. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to address that a little bit today. Um, because that seems to be a challenge with more people than I thought. Does that make sense? You want yes. to, you go yeah. ahead, interrupt me. Go it's ahead. Interesting that you would um, you you said what you said um, because what happened this week, mm -hmm. the end of part of last week, I was having a conversation with someone from Jamaica. Mm -hmm via whatsapp talking mm -hmm. to to them and their the 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 little daughter because mm -hmm. the daughter was actually fussing and crying and it says why are you crying and um she was having this argument with her older sister pertaining to the doll she was carrying so i decided to do the doll test on her mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. a white doll mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i said to her how come you have a white doll and she went I said, come on, open your mouth and talk to me. How come you have a white doll? Because I like the white doll. I said, how come not a black doll? She said, mm-mm, mm-mm. And I says, why not a black doll? She says, I don't like black dolls. Mm -hmm. So I proceed to think, I said, why you think you don't, why, you, why is it that you don't really like the black doll? Mm -hmm. She says, I said, you think it's not pretty? And she didn't know how to answer me. She she answer. Did, and, and I said, I said, come on, you can, don't be afraid to talk. You, you didn't think the, the black doll is pretty? And she says, not really. How old is it? Old She's is seven or eight years uh -huh. old. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Right? And I, 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 I proceed to ask her again. Uh, actually, the mother jumped in and said, but she keeps cutting the hair off. Uh, she's cutting the hair off of the white doll. And I recognize something. I said, you don't really like the white doll, do you? You're trying to make the white doll ugly to, to, because you feel the black doll is not as beautiful as the white doll. And she stared at me for a long time. And then she finally answered. I said, let me tell you something. The black doll represents you. Do you think you're ugly? She says, no. I said, so do you like the black doll now? And it's like suddenly the lights went on. She says, yes, I do. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I want to surprise them by sending a black doll for her because yeah. she does not have a, a black doll. And I don't think she'll ever find a black doll uh, where she's at. And I've been thinking about it. Maybe stream prayers we should send a black doll down for her because she was a little confused because she's mm -hmm. cutting the hair off of the mm -hmm. white doll because she mm -hmm. wants to make it look ugly because she mm -hmm. feels that the black doll represents her mm -hmm. and the black doll is ugly based on whatever she heard or who mm -hmm. she heard it from, mm -hmm. right? And I said to the mother, did you ever tell her about a black doll? And she just keeps smiling too. So I'm thinking the mentality thing. Yeah, it is. So it's again, it's a great example. Um, again, Physical freedom and liberty doesn't mean mental freedom. Mm -hmm. And we will live out more so, not just what we are physically, we will live out and experience more so what's in our minds. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, we could say that young girl, and notice it starts very early. Yes. We pass this on very, mm -hmm. very, very early. Uh, many times abuse from one person or another is often done because of how hateful someone feels about themselves. Mm -hmm. So they take, on, they take out their self-hate and self-disgust on someone else. Correct. And so this stuff is very, very important. But I want to make sure that my viewers, our viewers, that you don't think we're trying to lash out in some kind of a racist uh, kind of rant and that we're angry, mean. You know, I'm sure that's never come out in us and out through this program anyway. But because of, you know, people speaking, like this friend of mine mm -hmm. who, um, who acquainted that mentioned it some time ago, I, want, I thought it came back to my mind. I said, mm -hmm. we need to, I've said, we've shared about along these lanes right. why. Mm -hmm. And... Um, because the thinking sometimes someone said to me, I've had one or two people say this, well, why don't you just call it rebuilding the family? <laughs> and so if I take an attitude, part of it is because these are well-meaning people. These are wonderful people. Um, there's not an, a character issue. They're, they're, they're well-meaning. But I believe there's something behind this resistance, if you will. Because you notice the only problem many people have is with what the word black one word mm -hmm. black mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> let me address that a little bit today i i need to address it so number one if anything that you can hear I, i'm going to say r but because i'm <laughs> i'm the one who started this i'll take responsibility i no, want I'm, you to I'm hear you with my thing. heart with yeah. this i want you to hear uh, my motivation my intent mm -hmm. um with this uh, number one 
you know, I've spoken to many groups of people. So every color of people I've, I've ministered to. Mm -hmm. um, I've, um, so in different parts of the world and in different groups of people, also different churches of individuals, on a secular level, on a professional level, I've spoken in front of different audiences. Sometimes I was the only white person. And so, only and black, black person. person. <laughs> <laughs> we better delete that. <laughs> I was the only black person. Okay, I changed colors. Anyway, no, no. But, so sometimes, let's say, in, in some of the boardrooms in Toronto, I know I was the only black person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in some of those rooms in, in training sessions. Uh, and some of I conducted myself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I know what it's like to be a minority in certain settings, um, on, on in different levels, again, in different settings, in different arenas. Um, and so I want you to know that I know what it's like to be, to be seen in a good light, in a positive light. I'm not speaking this as someone who is an, op who has, who is an oppressed person. Mm -hmm. Even though I know what it's like to be to face prejudice and different challenges like that, as we all know, mm -hmm. but the thing was this: is um, let's say in preaching the gospel, like I said, preaching it in all different groups. I was privileged, and I should say this, to be an associate to Pastor Bud Williams, mm -hmm. one of the most precious men of God in this nation, or that this nation's produced, a wonderful man who loved people regardless. Mm -hmm. So a wonderful man. I have the, the utmost esteem and, and respect for who has since gone home to be with the Lord. But um, about 2011, 2012, the Lord spoke to me, really impressed my heart about, yes, I will continue to minister to all people, but there was a specific call to people of color. So this was something very specific to me and very clear to me. And there was the unfolding of the rationale to my heart as time went on. But let me say this. I want to read this scripture because it's quite interesting. This is what Paul says um, to the Galatian Christians. He says this in Galatians chapter 5, verse, Galatians chapter 2, excuse me, there's no, Gal so Galatians chapter 2. Look at what it says. Um verse 6 and from those who seem to be influential what they were makes no difference to me God shows no partiality I like that those I say who seemed influential added nothing to me talking about is how God had raised him up and taught him and and given him an assignment now he says this on the contrary when they saw that I'd been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised. Look at that. Mm -hmm. For he who worked through Peter for his apostle, apostolic ministry to the circumcised worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. See that? Now, so we see a distinction there. Paul is saying this. He recognized Peter was mainly fitted to reach who? The Jewish, Jewish people. Yeah. <clears throat> Paul had a wider call, not just his own people, but specifically to non-Jewish people right. or to the Gentile, of course, and he preached to the entire known world at that time. And so that one of the scriptures the Lord made clear to me because I was under them, I said, Lord, but I don't want to just come out and just speak to, um, come in, but I'm used to speaking to everybody mm -hmm. in all colors says, no, well, no, but, but part of your ministry is to people of color, particularly, I, I call it the black nation. Mm -hmm. Correct. That nation, you know, mm -hmm. people of color. Um, people who come from the, you know, an African descent. So they're, they're black. So that was very specific to me and very clear to me. But then I'm going to be honest with you. Part of what that, um, there's a journey you go on. Sometimes there's a journey of self-discovery. And where I started realizing that I needed to identify more with people mm -hmm. of my similar background. Let me tell you what I mean by mm -hmm. that. So because, you know, we've, when you're an assimilated people, you know more about everyone else's culture oftentimes than you do know your about own. your own. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding, we have the benefit of education. 
You have the, the benefit of understanding other people, making all these wonderful friends of all different kinds of backgrounds. But then I started in looking at this, and when I was facing, realizing, well, God was also calling me to speak to people, not just everybody, but there was this other area of ministry to people who looked just like me. And I started realizing that sometimes there were challenges in my own mind. Am I, am I um, identifying with them? Am I seeing them as equal or just as, um, as worthy to receive the very best of God like everybody else? And sometimes I started realizing there were apprehensions within me. I'm just, you know, I had to come to these honest things in my own heart, in my own life. And I started realizing this. I had bought into some of the beliefs that, you know what, we're not as, um, let's say, we're not as gifted. Because sometimes, remember, I'm, I'm, I'm more conservative than, than most people. But let me tell you what some of that might mean is this. You ever heard people say, um, I'm going to use an example. What's that uh, came to my mind? Um, oh, just a train of thought. What's that thing when we, um, we give extra, oh, I'm sorry about that. I should have jotted that down. When some people, in let's say governments, we do this. We give a, an, an allotment or we give some, a, a break to people who are less represented. What's that? A quota. A non, what there's, a, there's a quota we give. It's in the U.S. a lot. We do it in a lot in the U.S. Just, Someone's going to type it in, yeah. I guarantee you. <laughs> so, Peggy, you can send your word. Yeah, so, the, you know, when you give a quota, the U.S. gives a quota. You know, blacks were not represented as much, or sometimes the, the education system, let's say the Ivy League schools, they had very bright uh, um, black students, but they weren't getting the, um, the words just on my tip of my tongue. I, I um, know what you're about. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? You should have it by now. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> so anyway, you give them, um, because they might not have the acad the, um, not the, ac they have the academic ability, but they might not have the financial and, and material wherewithal to go to those uh, Ivy League schools. So they get, quote, oh, come on, help me, somebody. Send me a <laughs> note. There's a quote. Financial aid? No, no it's no, another thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a popular U.S. term. Um, t um, it's like a, a quota statement that you have a certain amount of people that can uh, get in because of their color. And so they would be hindered from getting it if they didn't have that. Some of the brightest black uh, minds today, they were, they had the, they had the benefit mm -hmm. of getting those scholarships. And um, oh, come on, guys, help me anyway. <laughs> since no one is helping me here, and you, I, and it's right into my time. But anyway, it will come. It will come. I'm going to say this. So sometimes we say this. We, we acted as if it's a complete fair playing ground. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, keep looking at that because I'm sure yeah, someone's no, going to come up with it. it. So we act like it's a complete fair, uh, playground mm -hmm. that um, there was no prejudice, there was no bias, there was no racism. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to do it on their own merits. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we acted like it was a complete... And I was thinking that way. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Because I believe in, in a strong work ethic. I believe and I still preach personal responsibility. I preach that very strongly. But then I started realizing... You, you need to realize what people are going through. You need to realize some people might not have had the privilege you went through, mm -hmm. you had. Some people started, because people say this, you know what, let um, everybody should just pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Mm -hmm. Well, suppose they never had any boots. Well, suppose they never had any straps. They never right. had any laces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's the assumption that everybody has the same, you know, is starting from the same thing. And so, again, I preach a strong gospel, but I had to start realizing I needed to identify and start realizing in order to help to elevate people of color, black people, I needed to make sure I was better identifying with them. Let me tell you another <coughs> reason why this is important. Oftentimes, su successful black people, what they end up doing is this is turning their back on their own people. Now, sometimes I understand the rest mm -hmm. why some of that happens. And so what God's intention for any of us was this, is that we become, we could say, a ladder for other people. Mm -hmm. We become a link 
for other people that we don't just take success unto ourselves, but we become a link, a chain, an encouragement to help other people realize their own success. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. necessarily yeah. because of us, but because of our encouragement and because of our example. So now, I know I'm going off course a little bit, but it's still part of, is that helpful a little bit, what right. I'm saying a little bit? But go ahead. I'm I, I wanted to jump in here because you mentioned something earlier um, about talking to your colleagues about it, and they ask you, why the black family? And I'm going to get to that. Don't I, worry about yeah, that. I remember when I had, had done the same thing, too. I was asked the same question. Why, you guys, why can't you say the family? Mm -hmm. And uh, my question was, why not the black family? I says, when you look at me, who do you see? Well, I see another human being that says, don't lie to me. Mm -hmm. When you look at me, if you had to describe me to somebody and you had to say, uh, the gentleman the gentleman over there, you'll you'll use two things, the, the black guy with the locks. Okay, That's yeah, what you you'll mean. identify somebody. You'll identify yeah. me. So mm -hmm. why can't I identify myself publicly to everybody mm -hmm. else? Why mm -hmm. does it have to be a problem? Mm -hmm. And you also said um, the fact that, you know, there are good nature, good standing people and that kind of stuff. But to me, the minute somebody has to question why I'm in my mindset and based mm -hmm. on what I have received in my past with actually facing blatant racism mm -hmm. is, is to tell me that somewhere down, deep down inside there, there's that little thing that says, okay, but why do you have to talk about you? Talk about us kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because I remember walking into an, an office that where I was the only black supervisor mm -hmm. and they thought I was the janitor, mm -hmm. right? And when it was later on revealed that I am the supervisor of another area, then they're like, oh, he's a young one. So the thing is, in the back of their minds, they're like, no matter, because to me, what if, if, if there was another nation that came and said, we want to talk about, nobody would make a question about it. Nobody mm -hmm. would even question it. Nobody would say anything about it. But the minute you use the word black, they ask the question, why? So to me, in as good as you are and as wonderful as you are, the minute you ask me that question, why, you have a problem. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you see what mm -hmm, I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it, it's like you coming to me and I said, oh, I, w I would like to do so, 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 so. If you agree with me, like, I mean, coming to work in stream period, you never asked me why you're doing this. Gotcha. You came and you said, sure, let's jump in. Let me help you do what you're doing. The minute you ask me why, you're questioning certain things mm -hmm. about streaming praise radio. Gotcha. And your question may not necessarily be one to help or want to say, how can I, okay, can you do this and change this? Your question is, is it all that? Gotcha. Now, I got it. Affirmative action. Uh, there you go. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> you no, you just pretend. You know no, yeah, yeah. no, 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 I don't want to hear. I'm gonna tell you why. I, say. I was listening to, um, and I'm thinking, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Somebody sent. Uh, actually, it just popped up here a minute ago. It's called pushback or push black. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Push black. Yes. And they had a stuff there. This woman talking about. Um, Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream. Mm -hmm. And he talked about affirmative action in there for um, for mm -hmm. the black folks. And he says, we didn't come here to have a thing. We just come here to collect our check. Yeah. And then he used the word affirmative. I'm thinking, Martin Luther King used it. And I watched this just last night. What is that word? So, so you said it. It's like that just drifted away from me. Okay. There you go. So, no, so, what I, so you understand, we go on our journeys. So now, even myself, I say, ah, you know. My, because of my stance on personal responsibility, <coughs> a strong work ethic, and that doesn't change. That's still a very intrinsic part of my life, and I really, I believe that. So we take, I still believe we must take full responsibility for our own choices, our own decisions, our own life. Can I just make a quick note yes. to, to, yeah. uh, to our brother who said, thanks for being encouraging, encourages enough to go out on a limb to educate us. And I mean, this is all about education, mm -hmm. folks. We're not trying to bring a separation. We're not, and I'm speaking on behalf of Pastor Carl. I know he's a pastor and he has to be a certain way, but I am, uh, well, I am here on Streaming Praise Radio. <laughs> so you feel you have to speak for me, right? No, 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 I'm no, joking, no. I, The thing you. is, is that some people say, well, he's a pastor, he has mm -hmm. to do certain things. I'm saying, no, we just want you guys to understand that when we come and we say what we say, mostly him, uh, <laughs> when we say what we say, uh, pretty much we're just trying to say, hey, we're not trying to separate, we just want our nation of people to actually stand firm or stand up for something that uh, that we know that is truth. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily we're trying to... Because, you know, you look around today and you see most of our nation young men either being killed, 
shot at and it, the, the question is asked um, what are you doing for them well we're just trying to tell them the truth mm -hmm. we're just trying to educate them we're just trying to bring them to the next level of says okay let's get rid of the mental slavery thing and come into the fact that of who you are how God has created you and what you need to be excellent Excellent. So uh, let me just continue this. Yes, go ahead now. So uh, remember that word, <laughs> yeah, affirmative, affirmative action. Affirmative action. <laughs> so now think about this now. Again, and I'm repeating myself just so you can hear our heart. I, str I strongly believe uh, the gospel is so powerful that if we'll take responsibility, God will change our lives completely. Mm -hmm. But on this journey that I experienced, I had to realize, you know what? There are many people that... Um, <clears throat> Things were not fair in North America. It hasn't been a level playing field, no matter what I thought or no matter what my privileges are. And I needed to better identify with people of color. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Did it mean I dropped all my other associations? Of course not. But it meant I needed to realize, because you could leave people behind. Or think about this. Many people, um, they become so like other, other cultures they want nothing to do with their own family. Many black people almost disown where they come from. Mm -hmm. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I'm just being honest with you, some of these things. And also coming to, as I understood and, and studying and restudying and understanding real, the real history of North America, the real history of the Caribbean and Europe and Africa, and I'm still doing some of the studies on that. When I realized that, I thought, my goodness, you mean most of what we were taught was done from one singular point of view, which is, and when you look at the history, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's very disappointing what we've been taught, that the, the subjugation of the African continent, what they did in, 19, in 1884, Europe basically carved up Africa. <laughs> now think about this. And then when I started realizing how people, black people think about themselves and how this has been a trained effort over decades upon decades upon decades, it's in our media, it's in our education system, it's, it's in our social system. I mean, it's, it's all the way through. I'm just being honest. You just, so when you come to grips with these things, and then part of what kicked it off for me was when I realized this, is when then... How many people of color, particularly black young men, no, want nothing to, about, don't want anything to do with hearing Jesus for one reason? Many of them actually believe we are preaching and extolling a white man's God. Mm -hmm. Now, you understand, so this is how perverted this stuff has become. Now, think what I'm saying now, so that many people treat this holy book I remember this book and the, the, the gospel, the Bible is a powerful go gospel. But it's been, in those many who've preached it in times gone by, they've, they've impressed upon it so much, their own whiteness. That I, I, and think about this. <laughs> I know if I get pushed back. Think about what I'm about to say. The high percentage of people, not just black, but of color, who actually believe Jesus was white. Yeah. Now, now, just think about That's that. That's true. And we know that can't be true. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand, this is how we could say the, um, so even the gospel in many case, cases, it's almost been taken over. Mm -hmm. It's been hijacked. And that's why many, if you think about, let's say, how, how different countries have been subjugated, foreign policies were started and all that, a lot of that was the belief. If you hear about the doctrine of manifest destiny, write it down, studied yourself, it was the belief that certain people had a God-given right and they were superior, let's think about this, by God's mandate. Just saying. So anyway, let me move on a little bit. Go. Our time is moving on a little bit. So these were some things I had to come to grips with. <clears throat> and I had to realize, no, God loves all people. I had to, I had to look to even people sometimes use certain scriptures to say black people were cursed. You know how many black people actually believe that? Yeah, I was told that as a young man, that black people were cursed. See? And, and people actually used a scripture. In fact, they completely missed it because they said Ham <laughs> was cursed because yeah. he looked upon his father's, father's nakedness. nakedness. Yeah. Well, the fact is this. The Bible says, listen, well, 
the Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Cush comes out of the, the um, out of the loins of Ham, but the fact is this, Cush wasn't the only person. Mm -hmm. There's many others. Now, if you really want to be honest, <laughs> see, now think about it. You can get white out of black, mm -hmm. but you can't get yep. black out of white. So I'm just saying, so all of these things are hidden from us. Something else came in to blind people's eyes. Why? If you divide a people, you can conquer them. Right. You understand? That? So you got to understand, I, I believe in all people, all colors. But when you, right, when you wrongly divide scripture, you will destroy people. When you wrongly divide scripture and you're selfish in heart, you will use the very word of God to say what it doesn't say to further your own purpose, and that's to subjugate and, and enslave people. People will use scripture, and they'll make it say what it doesn't say to hurt people. In fact, the Bible says, Paul says in Acts 17, 26, God has made from one blood all nations. You yeah. so I believe what the Bible says, but I'm getting back to this thing. I had to start realizing, you know what? In order to help a people, you better identify with them. You better understand their struggles. You better understand their difficulties. Does it mean there aren't things that we need to take a hold of and be responsible for ourselves? Of course not. You know, we've got these things. We've got, to, we've got to be honest about things in our own community. But I had to make sure I identified with our people. Now, let me say another thing. I'm, I'm kind of going off a little bit here, so I hope that makes sense. Oh, no, you're making a lot I of sense. I hope I'm making <laughs> yeah. sense. So, uh, but anyway, so, so people say, so why this black thing? Now, but let me go on another angle, which is kind of interesting. I don't mind the question, but as long as you're honest. So I said to this person, one of my responses, in addition to some things, some of which I shared just a while in a few minutes ago, I said, well, you know, if someone actually says they want to reach out to people in China, how come no one has a problem? Someone says, I want to reach out with the gospel to, and that's what I do here. This is really a gospel program. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what stirs me. That's what I'm called to do. Yeah. It's just a different format. How come someone says, if I, you know, they're going to have a, would you sponsor a special program reaching the Jewish people? Well, no, no one has a problem. Mm-hmm. Right? No. I just, and I said that to this person, what about, um, and someone else I'm going to talk to personally about this. Someone says, you know, well, I'm going to reach the Russian people. No one has a problem with that. Isn't that interesting? There's, there you go. So the question is, well, why the problem with black? Just because black. And you know I'm not divisive. You know it's, it's about what the name <laughs> says, rebuilding, which is acknowledging this, there's been some breakdown. But I also wanted to put a positive light and, and so this term, I also want to, I need to say this. We've been saying we don't want to be giving this negative narrative about the black family. I know because sometimes people have said that. You, we, we've said we've, got to, we've been guarding ourselves, and we want to improve in that because oftentimes if the, enti if the only picture, the only message you hear of black people is, you know what, they don't have good families, their fathers, they've got um, fathers who just have children and if that's all you hear, their children are gone awry, <clears throat> and that's not true. No, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I just so, I'm so, not even true. I told Claremont, make sure that we are putting forth yeah. the best picture. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we're, we're uh, negligent of some challenges, but I told you, my daughter's gra um, graduation, grade right. 12, right. I told you, was it 33% percent, of yeah. gra graduating class at an 80 plus, at honors, was yeah. on the honor roll. Uh, yeah. And they were as a good mixed uh, group. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Now, that couldn't be just one school. No. I mean, different. we've got, there's doctors, lawyers, even in our own family. And that's the <laughs> next generation down. Mm -hmm. My nephews and nieces, you know, one's a therapist, one's a, a dentist, another one's a teacher. That's just in one family. Yeah. Don't think about that. Well, what about your family? What about all these other people? So we want to make sure we're putting forth the best picture. And that's another reason why we're elevating this, is if all, um, if all we're putting forth is a negative image, all people are hearing is a negative image, mm -hmm. what is the expectation? So that's just another reason why we do what we do. Again, let me go back to something else I said. So if people have no problem with an outreach specifically to Jewish people, specifically to Spanish, specifically to Russians or anybody else, mm -hmm. why should they have a problem with this? 
No, no, I'll tell you why. I, I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why. It's because there's something about this word black. It's either intimidating or we know the devil must hate it because he likes to keep people down. He doesn't want to see people lifted up. And our purpose here is to preach the gospel by precept and example to our people, to the black nation. And people, when I say that, mm -hmm. people might get ticked up. Too bad for this reason. I don't say it in meanness. But the thing is this. Jesus said this. Here's another proof text. Gave one in Galatians. Here's another one. Jesus said, you ready for it? Go ahead. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to what? All nations. Another one was this. All people groups. Mm -hmm. Do you hear what I'm saying? No, look what he said. Now, so that means he was, Jesus was acknowledging, said this gospel needs to get to everyone equally. So what we're doing when I say black nation, I'm identifying a nation. I'm, in, I'm identifying a specific people group where I'm isolating them for the sake of specialization. Why? Because we're passionate about seeing the black family, the black community, the black nation elevated the way Jesus intends for them to be. You've heard someone who says this, all boats will rise. If there's true economic development, in, in the true sense of the word, then all the boats will, ride with, with, will rise with the tide. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is this. If we preach the gospel right and don't have a, 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 a divided gospel, you can say, let me say yeah. another way. You know, sometimes even the way some <laughs> communities are built, you realize if you understand sociology and, and uh, societal things and how they build communities, it's amazing how some communities are designed to be poor. <laughs> it's amazing. They're designed to be poor. Why? Because they get so few um, government dollars for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So few dollars for community, for social services, for health, so they stay poor. Whereas other communities get disproportionate support. I'm just saying design. So we're trying to say this. We want to make sure that we preach such a strong gospel. And again, it includes a strong work ethic, personal responsibility, no excuses. Well, we say this. We expect the very best. We want God to move in the black community and be established. Let me think. And so it's, it's addressing certain things. Let me give another example. Black. Why is it then? Most people, even black people, if you said to them, you know what, I'm going to, I'll give you a paid vacation to some place in Africa. I'll give it, many of them would say, no, no, thank you. Yeah. You see, again, addressing a mindset. I'm not going to, no one, a mindset. I'm not whining, not complaining. It's a mindset about the way you've been taught to think about yourself and your country or continent of origin. You think bad about yourself, which means you think bad about people who look like you. So you will hurt people who look like you. You'll favor a lighter shaded man <coughs> above your own self. Now, why is this so important? Because this is going on in communities. Listen, in Christian households who oftentimes, I hate to say it, but, but I'm just on a roll here. How come many times parents are favoring a lighter shade child over a darker shaded child. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me this stuff. Now, this is, my, this is going on in Christian and non-Christian homes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going to say this. See, if we preach the gospel right, what I'm doing here, we're identifying in the weeks to come, we're going to look at how the scripture addresses this. Because if we did this right, we would have more unified families. We would never be divided by color or by shade. We would also elevate the black community and African countries way better than we do now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Why is it that we favor? Don't <coughs> think. All by shade, all by color. And another proof text, Paul says it, in Christ, we're neither male nor female, sexism. We're neither Jew nor Greek. Look at that. That's race. Mm 
-hmm. We're neither bond nor free. That's social, socioeconomic. But because we've not heard that part of the gospel, then our default is our prejudice and racism built into us, not just yesterday, but over hundreds of years, and we're living out of that paradigm. And so I'm telling you, that's why this is so important. We're passionate about this because we want black people to know God loves them, he cares about them, he hates racism, he hates anything built on the superiority of one person or color of man above another, and that's why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. Every people group must hear this, mm -hmm. all nations. And so we're about elevating the black community because if we don't say it, and if, oh, think about this now, you realize, here's another answer, why we do this. Why rebuilding the black family? You're not gonna do well in taking care of another family if you don't take care of your own. <clears throat> you want some kind of stability in your own family and you use that as a, as a jumping off point, as a platform from which to help other families. You see what I'm saying? So that's part of why this is. So here again, one, let me say it one more time. Why is it no one, one has no problem? <laughs> Outreach, let's preach the gospel, Jewish people. Russians, have you said, Spanish, of course, by language, of course. China. When we mention China, thank you. The black family, mm -hmm. people have a problem. No, that's sometime, I'm not saying it's everybody, but if it's prevalent, there's something about that black that's the problem because if we took it out, no one would have a problem. No, we can't, we're going to be strong. We're going to be even stronger on this because our motivation, again, we're not divisive in spirit. You know our hearts. You hear it coming out. You can tell a mean-spirited person when you hear them. This is about rebuilding the black family, helping men to know who they are, Come, people of uh, uh, women to know who they are, having our children to know who they are and to know that they're better. I preached a message recently at our church that you were never, was it last week we were talking about, you gotta know who you are. Sure. You were never, it was never, ne God never um, judged a person, think about this, strictly by their color. Very true. How is that, that so much of our society mm -hmm. and much of our beliefs, it's based on externals. Think about that. If I could jump in here yeah, very jump quickly. In. I, I recently watched uh, a documentary from Dr. Matula, whatever her name was, from Zambia. And I didn't know this, so I went and did a little bit of digging, and I found out that how many years ago that Zambia sold out to um, sold out to the the uh, the country to the Chinese. They now t they now took over Zambia, mm -hmm. an African country, and uh, in the sense that they even have a road and a community that is built by them that the Africans can't even go into. And I thought, wow. Now, you probably don't know this. It's pretty much the same thing is beginning to happen to Guyana. Guyana just discovered oil, mm -hmm. right? And when there was no oil, nobody was interested. Now there's oil, everybody's interested. And who's getting pushed aside again? But it's that's happening. But you see, that's why I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I believe some of that will be stopped when we have right leaders. That's another thing. You that's see, thing, yeah. people have, if you go back in some of the African history, some of their, I'm going to give some of the names maybe in a few weeks, they've had some amazing leaders who had a real vision for their own people mm -hmm. to elevate that continent. Let's put it another way. Think about this, folks. Do you think the world would be better if all the nations were strong? The answer is yes. Yeah. Oh, by the way, think about this now. Just think about what I'm about to say. It's amazing. I heard a, a statement recently. About 50 years ago, China couldn't even feed itself. 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Which means, and I'm not backing their government policy, I'm not saying that, but mm -hmm. some years ago, let's say 50 years ago, less than 50 years ago, mm -hmm. couldn't feed their own people. Think about that. Only 50 years. They made some decisions. See, that's the difference between leadership. leadership yeah. They made some governmental decisions as a country that put them on the course for where they are today. Yeah. Now, the thing, so that's why what I believe where this is going, that's why I want you to get this message out. There has to be a change 
in our mentality, which means men, you mentioned African continent, the Caribbean. We have to have a, a kind of leader on not just the, the school systems, but particularly in government, that they think more about serving their people mm -hmm. than dominating their people. Right. You see that? Because that's what's happened. If you dominate, you'll sell out. Mm -hmm. That's what some of them are doing. They're using their power to, to, to sell out. Why? To, to uh, make themselves rich. Mm -hmm. So you need the kind of leaders now across the board who see themselves serving their nation and they think beyond their own life and they're thinking to their children and future generations. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, well, what can we do to truly help our people? That's got to be the thinking. And if you think that way, well, then you're going to be thinking now, you're going to be dreaming, you're going to be thinking, what do we do to help our people? What do we do to educate our children? What do we do so that our children can be here? It was never God's plan that Africans would have to think that their future is in going to Europe or America. Why would he give them such a resource-rich continent? We're changing minds. Now, I know our time is up, so I'm going to say close it, but I'm going to say this again. As I close, I know you want to push me out. No, 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 I, no, I, don't, I, no, no, I want to say this before you yeah, close because yeah. I, 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 I want to hear your commentary just very quickly. We got about just about a minute. Back in my day when I first heard of Idi Amin, mm -hmm. I liked his regime. I liked what he was doing because he was trying to take back what is, I guess, over a course of time, greed stepped in that caused a lot of problems for him. Yeah. And that's what generally happens with most of our African mm -hmm. leaders. They have good intentions, but over the course of time, greed kicks in because Idi Amin really was trying to say, let's get rid of the Europeans and take, take mm -hmm. back the stuff mm -hmm. how it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, and of course, greed stepped in and, uh, you know, and th this happened, but... And that's what happened to us. And I, it's the same thing that right now there's a debate going on. There's questions going on around the world about what's going to happen to Guyana mm -hmm. based on the oil that we just found, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of stuff going on. But you see, why, the, why we have to say this is this. Remember what I'm about, what I'm about to say. The next generation, mm -hmm. younger generation, many of them are not going to take the status quo of what has been. Right. They'll not allow themselves... They will not tolerate complete mastery by another people. So we have to give them a new mindset, you know, a motivation, an incentive to rise to a certain quality of leadership, accountable leadership, where we're serving our people so that our nations can be empowered, our children can be self-sufficient, our nation self-governing. Anyway, don't forget... Um, what was I talking about? Healing for the Nations. Thank you. <laughs> Healing for the Nations. Day Star. Thursday, the, on Daystar Television Network, this Thursday at 2 p.m. Tune in next week again to another Rebuilding the Black Family. We're going to talk about a mindset. We're changing that. We're renewing our minds, as Scripture says, so we can fulfill God's thank best for, for our lives. Again, thank Rebuild you so much for joining us. Family, Pastor Carl Lewis and myself, Claremont Humphrey. We trust you found this program helpful. Please give us your feedback on our Facebook page, Foundation for Life Church. Also, visit us at foundationforlife.ca, where you will find some free life-building resources. Join us next time for another edition of Rebuilding the Black Family. Until then, build your life and family on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ.